but he's already something of a superstar. Blake's Wayward Pines trilogy has been a massive hit in the Kindle universe and has since been adapted in TV shows of the same name starring Matt Dillon. Blake Crouch has an astonishingly prodigious imagination and he's working on so many things, but with Dark Matter, I would say Blake Crouch has taken his work to a whole new level. It's a propulsive, pretty remarkable book. It calls to mind the work of some of the most inventive genre writers of yore. Those guys able and gals able to force big ideas, oh, for example, quantum physics, to yield to their imaginations. And yes, while they're blowing our minds, writers like Blake are also creating something deeply human and visionary. All the brilliant plot hijinks and high concept imaginings are in service of something more because the real engine of the book from the first page to the last is a love story. One that plays out in a, in, in a way I guarantee you won't be expecting. And it delivers a bittersweet message about second chances and paths not taken. Paths not taken. Dark Matter is a thriller, does everything a thriller should brilliantly and managed to generate real emotion. It certainly did for me. I can't overstate how much excitement there is throughout Penguin Random House for Dark Matter. I bet a lot of you in this room have already read it or heard about it. You can just feel the enthusiasm spreading. Certainly for me, you know, one of the high watermarks for Crown over the last few years is publishing Gone Girl. I have to say, I have never gone into the world and said, aha, we found another Gone Girl. I, have, I dare say, I think Blake Crouch is in her company. It's my belief and expectation that with the publication of Dark Matter, Blake Crouch will be a household name. Blake Crouch. Thank you so much, Molly for that uh, lovely welcome. Thank you guys, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming out so early. I am really thrilled and honored to be here and get to talk to you about this new book of mine, Dark Matter, which is coming out this summer. Before I get going, I just wanna say that it was in the Iredell County Public Library when I was a boy that I discovered The Lord of the Rings um, and the Hardy Boys and Time and Again, all these big kind of formative books that would go on to define who I became as a writer. And I came from a lower middle class family and without libraries, I would not have had the opportunity to discover these books, so thank you. Um, my high school library was the quiet place where I would go to write bad poetry to my girlfriends or soon to be ex-girlfriends who were breaking up with me. <laughs> my college library was the place where I'd go to work on my first novel, Desert Places. Uh, and when it was published and I found out that it was in my local library, it was a much bigger thrill to me even than finding out that it was in the bookstores because these, you know, a library is a sacred place. Um, also, they don't return books in the same way, so. Um, for those of you who don't know me, and hopefully that's not everyone here, but maybe, I've been actively publishing since 2004. And my path has been the journey of me trying to figure out who I am as a writer. I think that's the hardest thing a writer has to do. They have to figure out what they should be writing about, what stories they should be telling, what the act of writing means to them. And I knew I loved storytelling and suspense and to occasionally scare people. But beyond that, for a lot of years as I was developing in my career, it was a huge question mark. And then I discovered this guy named Michael Crichton and something just clicked for me. He wasn't just coming up with these cool plots. He was writing books that allowed him to explore subject matter that that interested him. It was like writing a self-education. And there were a ton of subjects that fascinated me. Emerging technologies, the cutting edge of science, history. And I thought, wait, so you can just write books about things that also stroke your own curiosity? And it was a real breakthrough moment for me. And so I tried that with this series of books I wrote called Wayward Pines. And it was the best, most invigorating experience I'd ever had as a writer. And so now we come to why I'm standing here right now, and it's this book, Dark Matter, which I took this same approach to. And for the last decade, during this sort of writerly identity crisis, I'd been struggling through, I'd always wanted to write about quantum mechanics. And I know you all just fell asleep, but bear with me, I promise this gets good. <laughs> um, I tried several times to write a version of Dark Matter, approaching it through three different ideas, but no one of them seemed to support a single book. And the breakthrough happened two years ago, in Chicago, actually. Uh, I was here visiting a good friend of mine named Marcus Seiki, who's also a novelist. And I pitched him these three ideas, thinking, hey, I think this could be a book, or this could be a book, or this could be a book. And, and as we were brainstorming and talking and drinking, writers, I suddenly realized these weren't three different novels. These were actually three different 
components of the same big novel. And the concept of this new book felt scary and daunting, but I now knew that that was the goal. That was a good thing if, if it felt scary. It meant I was onto something that was gonna maybe push me out of my comfort zone. So I wanted to write a thriller with this backbone of speculative science. And here's the premise of dark matter. We have a brilliant physicist named Jason Dessen. He's living in Chicago, in, up in Logan Square, with his wife Daniela and his son Charlie, and he is a true genius. And while there was a point in his late 20s when you know, he could have been this star in his field, he instead chose a family-focused life. He chose to be a professor instead of this huge scientific genius in working in research. And one night as he's walking home, he's abducted by a mysterious masked man and injected with a drug. And when he next awakes, the world has completely changed. He's no longer married, he doesn't have a son, and he has achieved this professional success beyond his wildest dreams. And this sets him on this thrilling, mysterious, sometimes terrifying journey to find out what's happened to him. And I wanna say something about quantum mechanics now. And don't fall asleep, I promise. This is <laughs> profound. Here's the thing, I wrote this book so if you've never heard of quantum mechanics, it doesn't matter. But quantum mechanics says something unbelievably profound about the universe that we live in. And this area of physics generally pertains to how particles behave at the subatomic level. And for instance, they appear to do in crazy things like exist in the same place or exist in different places at the same time, to be almost in multiple realities. And maybe the behavior of subatomic particles doesn't matter in our day-to-day -day lives, but when you scale up the ramifications to the macro world, to our world, it changes everything. It's called the many worlds theory, and it goes something like this. Some physicists believe that every thought we have, every action we take, every choice we could possibly make creates a new world. For instance, in a different reality, instead of coming to this breakfast, you hit snooze on the alarm and slept in, or decided to order room service and read the arc you got yesterday that you can't wait to get into. Or maybe you got lost and never made it here. And this mini worlds theory says that these other realities not only exist, but they're just as real as the one we're all experiencing together in this room at this second, which means that we're a part of a much larger and more mysterious reality than we have ever dreamed. And these other worlds, physicists believe they're all around us, microns away from the surface of our skin, wrapped up in other dimensions, interconnected by this matrix, matrix of choices, of our choices. And these questions raised ideas in me that made me want to write dark matter. I mean, would I, would you become a materially different person if you'd miss this breakfast? Would that set in motion a series of events, of events that would alter the person that you are? And if we take that up to a larger scale, what if you'd married someone else? What if you'd not gotten married? What if you'd done something other than become a librarian? So as I wrap this up, what is dark matter, this novel? It's a hybrid thriller about the road not taken contains elements of science fiction and paranoid suspense and the slightest touch of horror, but ultimately at its core, it is a love story. It's the manifestation of everyone's existential question, am I who I was supposed to be? Am I living the life I was meant to be living? And by virtue of that question, an epic quest to find our way home to the people and to the life that we love. I wrote this book for people who love sci-fi. I wrote this book for people who hate sci-fi. When I say this book is for everyone, I mean it. In fact, in the dedication, I did something I'd never done. Instead of dedicating it to a person, I wrote, I dedicate this to anyone who has wondered what their life might look like at the end of the road not taken. Thank you all for being here bright and early. You're an amazing audience. Safe travels home.